Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call to order our school board meeting for March 16th, 2022. Can I get a roll call, please, Mr. Sloan? Mr. Cox? Here. Mr. Henry? Here. Mr. Llewellyn? Here. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Mundy? Here. If I can get everybody to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Good evening, everybody. I know some of us are at the UD games tonight working for the school district and the band and such. So we're a few shy in the audience. Um, to my far left down here, we have Nathan Mundy, board member, Mr. Don Henry, board member, uh, Dr. Andrea Townsend, our superintendent. My name is Joe Cox, uh, current board president. To my right is Leslie Miller, uh, board member and vice president. Uh, to my right farther down is John Llewellyn, uh, board member and then Ryan Sloan, our treasurer. Out in the audience tonight, we have Mr. Barry, uh, Human Resources, uh, Jack Haig, our business manager. Um, with curriculum is Dr. Craig Myers, and our athletic director this evening is with us, Evan Ivory. All right. um, it is recommended that the agenda for March 16th, 2022 um, meeting be adopted as presented. I need a roll call, please. So moved. Or motion and second, sorry. Second. And a roll call, please. Mr. Cox? Uh, yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. It is recommended that the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 2nd, 2022 be approved as submitted. A motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. <coughs> Mr. Sloan? Mr. Henry? Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. We have no comments from the public relating to agenda items. Uh, moving on to item number eight, our student rep report. Mr. Llewellyn. Thank you. Um, we have McKenna with us. Um, I've asked her, if she would, to share just a minute or two just about um, her experience so far being a student board rep and maybe just some encouragement. We, we are in the application process now for student board reps for the 22-23 school year. And last week, the high school received uh, an email, the students did, as well as today, um, they got the fortune or unfortunate of seeing me on their little video production. Uh, Shabri joined me for that, but uh, this is, I'm gonna, she'll probably kill me for this, but, um, in Miss Earl's room where this is videotaped, you know, Shabri's been here, and she's spoken in front of us numerous times, like McKenna's about to do. But there, if you've ever been in that room, um, you know, it's just a classroom, but it does have the green backdrop. It has two or three really bright lights shining in your face when you're talking, and it spooked her. So she was like, I'm not talking because those lights are too bright. And <laughs> so she just, she was at least, sitting there with me, and um, she was on camera at least, but she, she, they didn't even mic her, so I didn't dare ask her anything because she probably couldn't hear her. So, But I um, thought that was funny. She spoke here numerous times, but we don't have bright lights full, you know, in her face, so she wasn't as scared of that. So, um, But I uh, shared with the school today that uh, these applications are open through April 8th, and just an encouragement, but I'd like McKenna, if she would, just to encourage students as well that might get this or their parents might watch this um, to to just share her experience a little bit about this and um, go ahead uh, good evening I just want to talk about um, this past year of being a um, student board representative um, honestly it's way more than I thought it would be and I, that's a good thing um, um, it opened my eyes and it like really made me realize that there's a lot more going on side, inside our school district than we see or think of. And it's interesting to know everything that is happening um, and being able to see it firsthand um, from the board. Um, I've liked being able to communicate ideas from my, 
my fellow students um, to the board because I feel like they might not hear um, those issues since they're not in the building all the time. Um, I think it's really important that students definitely have at least some sort of, um, they just know that, just let the board know what they think because ultimately, I mean, we're what's important, like, you know, a student school district. But um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I graduate in just a couple months, um, and I encourage students to sign up for this. I really do. Um, it's very fun, actually. Uh, you get closer with your fellow student board reps. Um, you get to see stuff way before other people do. Um, and you get to see behind the scenes. So I think it's really important and really cool opportunity. But the application is due April 8th, so just check that out if you'd like to. Thank you. Got a quick question for you before you step away. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what do you think was one of the biggest challenges when you came into this, being new and, and not really knowing what to expect? Um, I would say, because I'm just, I'm usually not big on public speaking, so it was just getting used to like, oh, I'm just going to be speaking every once in a while or so. So it's just getting used to that. Really, it's no big deal because it's just the same people every time, and you just talk about what you want. So that's how I got over it. And we don't bite. No. <laughs> All right, thank you. I also have one question, <laughs> <laughs> just to keep you up here. I, uh, I was just wondering, do you have a favorite moment or a favorite part of being a uh, student rep? Or um, I think so. One of my first issues that I wanted to talk about when I became a student board rep is the dress code. Um, I liked being able to talk to our principal about that and have a sit-down meeting with her. Um, and I feel like at least we made sort of a difference because the dress code did change after that. Um, so I thought that was really cool that we at least you know, got it initiated. So. That's awesome. Thank you. You wouldn't have talked to her otherwise, right? Um, before before I turn it back to you, Joe, I wanted to uh, give Leslie some props here, and I guess I could keep McKenna up there, but I'll let you stay in your seat. And um, if you want to chime in on this, you can. But um, one other thing I wanted to share now, rather than waiting till the end when we all speak, um, the last meeting we talked about the roundtable that we have with the other three districts, and that we might talk about. Some subjects like career readiness or substitute teachers or the curriculum, and it turns out, thanks to Leslie here, we actually have a different topic. Uh, I'm going to let her share about it for a second, but our roundtable on April 9th is going to be a discussion about something Leslie's going to share with us. Go ahead. Um, on this past Saturday, we did a Zoom with all of the kids and, and the different uh, board members, and so I just started perusing through what OSBA is uh, monitoring bill-wise. And, and they have an entire list that board members can go into and uh, you can check and see where they're going with certain bills. And lo and behold, there was a bill, House Bill 565, is the state board adding five non-voting students to their arrangement. So that was, this bill was just created in February, and it has two sponsors. It also has a number of representatives that have already uh, signed on for it. So I just think that this is perfect for our, our, our kids. Do you have any comments you'd like to make? The, the really interesting thing is that hopefully those two sponsors will be at the April 9th um, because I, I could see them asking uh, some of you to testify, which would be really cool. A little scary probably, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll leave Shabri at home. <laughs> <laughs> right, there'll be lights for that. <laughs> or no bright lights, yes. So, but I think it's just perfect because you guys have all been intricately involved with all of the boards and now the state school board is wanting to do the same thing. Uh, and it would be five members and they would be from one from each quadrant. So they, uh, they've got it all written up and it's a bill sitting out there, so. And they get to change these every right. Saturday, right? Every two weeks, right? 
Well, the interesting thing is that they're they're still trying to figure out how they want to organize it. So having the kids talk to yes. this group that we're gonna we're inviting every member of the committee this can that this is sitting in right now, and at least a few of them I'm sure will join us. And so this will give the kids a, a voice to say, here's how it's been in Centerville or Northmont or here in West Carrollton, and here's some ideas we have, and maybe they'll get they'll, some of their ideas will make it in there. So it's pretty exciting, and I know some of those other topics were interesting too but i don't think there's a better match for the kids there's 11 <laughs> kids in this and uh, if they can't speak to this they have no shot of speaking to anything else because they've got great experience with this so mm -hmm. looking forward to it again it'll be april 9th and really we'll report out on it in april good evening and it's a lovely evening. <laughs> I just wanted to remind everybody of the different ways you can find out what's happening in your school district. WestCarrolltonSchools.com is our website. You can access Facebook at West Carrollton City Schools or Twitter at West Carrollton Schools, or I'm sorry, WC City Schools, and you can access both Twitter and Facebook on the homepage. I wanted to warn you, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day, and it's the day that sneaky leprechauns might come out and wreak havoc. But Miss Reichert's class at CF Holiday is prepared, and they have made leprechaun traps. And these young ladies, um, we had quite the discussion about what attracts a leprechaun, and apparently it's the colors green and gold, shiny things like gold coins and foil, they also like cotton balls to sleep on. And one more thing that attracts leprechauns is to put a sign on the trap that says, no leprechauns allowed. So we're hoping that all this works out okay. We'll put an update up tomorrow on Facebook. <laughs> Spring break, March 28th through April 1st. The Pirates return to school Monday, April 4th. And by the way, the first day of spring is this Sunday, March 20th. The CF Holiday Farewell Tour will be Saturday, April 16th from 9 a.m. to noon, and the community and alumni are invited to attend. We don't yet have a date for Walter Shade, but we'll get that out as soon as uh, we get those details confirmed. And you can follow the progress of the new buildings at westcarrollton.schools.com under Building Project. Pictured are classroom lockers, the gym floor being installed, and work on the stage at the new 5-6 building. Pirate Robotics, they're off to compete at the Greater Pittsburgh Regional Competition this weekend. They usually put a link up um, that we can watch the competitions. I've been looking for it today, but there's nothing available yet. As soon as I do find a link, though, I will put that on Facebook so we can all watch their progress. Wanted to congratulate seven of our pirate athletes who celebrated signing day, and they're going to be going on to college to play their favorite sport. And remember, too, that these young athletes, to get that college support and um, just a college to look at them, they're also carrying a good GPA, which we want to recognize that as well and congratulate them. And I think it's important also to thank all the families coaches, the friends, staff who came out yesterday to support them and who have supported these athletes through their years of being a pirate. And we want the pirates to continue the kindness challenge. I did a quote just for Mr. Mundy. This is from a third grader who I thought was extremely wise. She said, when I do something nice, it comes back to me. And I thought she was just wise beyond her years, so there you go for that. And continue watching for information coming directly from your child's school as well as the superintendent. And that was all I had. <laughs> Thank you.
So this, so this is a um, kind of a winter update, um, but before we get there, um, this would have happened technically in the winter season. Um, senior Jordan Berry was selected to the second team all state um, football team, which um, you know we didn't have the year we wanted to. Um, so that makes it even more um, exceptional that he was uh, selected to um, the second team. So he will be um, one of the, the faces you'll see outside of the gym. Um, just kind of a rundown of our high school sports here. Um, we'll kind of go through each one, some of the highlights. Um, boys basketball, um, I'm sure everyone is aware we played at, um, I keep wanting to call it the Q, but it's uh, Farmer Bank House. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers Stadium. Um, great experience for them. May or may not happen again. Um, we played at a, like 11 o'clock, uh, so it wasn't ideal, but um, it was a great experience for them, and they won the game. Um, that's kind of Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. That's what it's called. Um, and then I'm going. I'll leave these. I'll kind of flash these. I'm not going to go through everybody. Um, just kind of recognizing our seniors. Um, you know, all league. We had three kids selected. Um, great. Our boys finished second in our side of the league, and I think it was third overall in the league. Um, and that's with our, um, you know, our returning highest honored player um, was injured at about five games in. Um, so it was a great season. We had a lot of younger guys step up. Um, a lot of JV guys came up to varsity with injuries and um, did a good job of covering. Um, all district teams, we had some kids selected as honorable mention. Um, girls basketball, this was, a, this was one of the highlights of the winter season. Um, this is just kind of, it, you know, when, anytime you have to bring out the record book, um, it's, it's a great season. Um, you'll kind of see, I, I mean, I just kind of ran back, and granted this was in the, a lot of these were in the G-Walk. Um, you know, it's 18 and 6 was a, an amazing accomplishment. Um, so this is, you can't really see it. Um, Ashaya Maddox is a junior. Um, and like I said, we had to break out the um, record book. She is now our all-time leading rebounder as a junior. And that is with um, freshman and sophomore years, did not play complete seasons during, due to injury. Um, this year, I think she, she played in every one. Um, She's awesome to watch. She's, she's one of my favorite student athletes to watch. She's all energy, all hustle, um, very smart kid, um, great team leader. Um, we had two tournament wins, which, um, you know, we don't have that in the record books, but I venture to say it's been a while. Um, we won an overtime thriller against Butler um, at Troy, double overtime, um, and then we beat Wayne um, a few days later, um, then lost to the number one seed to not make it out, but it was still a heck of a game, heck of a season. I'm very proud of the girls, um, and they have most of their starters and big contributors coming back next year. So it should be very exciting. Um, if you haven't if you haven't watched them play yet, there it's everything you want to see out of our pirate student athletes. Um, great, <laughs> it starts in the classroom. Great grades, and um, the girls want to be pushed and want to work hard, um, and it, it's just a great. Great environment, um, lots of young talent. Um, bowling, if our whole girls team's not there, but um, you know, our if you don't know about our league, our league always has multiple teams going to the state tournament in bowling. It is a very, very competitive uh, bowling league, um, and we didn't have any seniors in, in our bowling program. Um, cheerleading, I wanted to put a graphic up of their um, fundraiser they did. It was the ugly sweater. Uh, T-shirts that sold really well. Um, we had some other schools copying what we were doing. Um, and they made they had it was a great fundraiser. Highlight of swimming. Um, they had the highest team GPA after the second quarter. It was a three three seven. Um, great great stuff. And you know I had to kind of um, shout out Luke here. Um, he was in the signing day picture, but um, you know Luke when I first got here he was a freshman and we were Division two in swimming. Um, he went to state, which was an amazing experience. Um, hasn't we moved up to Division One, which is crazy in swimming. Uh, Saint X, if 
If you don't know the history of St. X, they've won the GCL um, 30 years in a row or whatever in swimming. They have their own swimming facility. Um, his times would have equated to him going back to state if we were Division II. Um, unfortunately, in Division I, um, we made it to the district meet at Miami. Um, so I got to go out there and see him swim. Um, and this, you can kind of see the way they do the all league honors and swimming are a little bit weird. So you can be first team in multiple things. Um, and this was, you know, four years of him doing this. So um, he'll probably, you can probably pencil him into the Athletic Hall of Fame um, as one of the better swimmers to ever swim here. Um, great kid. You know, he played soccer as well. Um, first time that he played in his high school career and he was first team all league in soccer. Um, it's <laughs> he could play any sport here and be great. Um, just a great kid, great leader. Um, wanted to give you know the kids their shout outs for the all league honors. Um, we were able to do the swim the senior night senior night swim meet again. Um, wrestling, it's a little weird. Our team is not is not that large and we also only have one female in this picture and we ended up having three female wrestlers. Um, which is um, going to be full OSHA next year. Um, highlight Emily Von Dore. Um, she goes to Bishop Fenwick. She lives in West Carrollton. Um, Bishop Fenwick shut down the wrestling program. We gladly, you know, welcomed her in, and she made it to state. So, um, you know, did a gr did a great job. Um, you know, we have a lot of. If you ever see the Pee Wee wrestling teams here, there's a lot of young girls in wrestling, and I, th I think. As a growing sport, we really have the potential to be um, a, a great wrestling school. Um, long tradition here. Um, other updates, Athletic Hall of Fame, um, Carla Cheney Branham and Coach Dean Pond. Um, it's always great getting to talk to people. We did this, I um, guess you can see, but it was at a basketball game. Um, and anytime I can talk to the people that um, you know, we see on, I see on the wall every time I walk by it. Um, you know, I just, I love it. It's, it's great. Um, as you know, we hired a new football coach. Um, these are just two pictures he posted. Um, first workout, you know, he's like, what should I expect? And I said, I, you know, we have a lot of kids in track and stuff and um, didn't want to get his expectations up. He had 21 kids there. And then the next day they had 51. Um, and now they're at the point where they don't fit in the weight room. So, um, you know, they're, they're doing different groups. It, it's really helping, you know, he was over at the middle school um, and the kids are getting to know him. And I think that um, when you do talk to him and get to know him, you know, you are kind of inspired. Um, he, he's just great with the kids. He'll do really good things here. Um, and I guess I don't really need to touch on this since it was already covered. Um, I just wanted to give a special shout out to these kids. Um, you know, when I was cleaning up yesterday, they thanked me um, after, which I don't, I can't tell you um, if I've ever been thanked by a kid. You know, they, it was like five o'clock and they were like, oh, thank you for staying so late. And I'm like, you, have <laughs> you have no idea, but um, it's just great that they're all great kids and great in the classroom, um, you know, great parents. You know, you can look at all of them and it's pretty much the team parents are, are all in this picture. Um, you know, the parents that step up to work concessions and stuff, um, booster presidents, um, vice presidents, um, and it really goes to show that it is a full family effort um, to raise kids that really want to work hard in the classroom and in their sport. Um, that's all I have. I, if anybody has any questions, I, I'll stay up here. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. One minor one. Yep. How did the community accept buying tickets online versus paying cash? Um, I, I didn't hear anything, any complaints. Um, you know, all the tournament games going forward um, will be online. Um, the hope is to move all of our ticket sales online um, shortly. You, the, the league is going to it, and I think the more that people are used to it, the more, um, the more easy it's going to be for everybody. Our next presenter tonight is uh, Mr. Myers. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. This looks like Ryan's paper. <laughs> Steal from the master of large print. Uh, good evening. If at any moment tonight during this presentation you feel dizzy or nauseous, that's just a natural effect of what I call the graduation requirement syndrome <laughs> and understanding all of these uh, contingent, complicated things sitting in front of you. So I have a very brief slide presentation and I just wanted to back that up with the paper that you have. And just like any uh, educator knows, as soon as you hand somebody a piece of paper, you never see their eyes again, which is okay. <coughs> but there's a lot of places to look. Um, so I, I don't know if, if you have questions in mind and if you wanna, uh, you know, feel free at any point in time to jump in and just say, hey, can you go a little bit deeper on this or that? Um, I'm gonna present 2022, which will be an eye exam, uh, but believe it or not, that's the edited version. 2022 is the smaller piece of paper. 2023 is the larger piece of paper. So I'm gonna dive in and go and, and just interrupt and let me know where you have, you want any additional clarification. So the class of 2022 graduation requirements, of course we have to meet the credit requirements at the high school, which is 21 Carnegie units and they're in specific content areas. Option one for the graduation for the class of 2022, you have to satisfy one of the three original pathways. So last year's graduating class 21 and this year's class 22 actually have the same three choices originally, where you had to earn 18 points on the seven end of course exams, the industry or the industry credential and workforce readiness. Um, that is an industry credential. A lot of our students at Miami Valley CTC are able to acquire a work keys uh, credential. They, they take a work keys exam and pass an industry recognized credential. Um, or college and career readiness earn a remediation free score in math and that is set at 22 and ELA which is also set at 22 on the ACT. What you will not find on your piece of paper are those smaller details about what the remediation free score is because the state legislature updates that on a yearly basis. Um, that's option one. Option two, you could satisfy the new graduation requirements. So you could satisfy the demonstrating competency and the demonstrating readiness, which is on the larger sheet of paper. So if you're not, uh, you're everybody hanging in there? <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, so demonstrating competency really means you are able to reach a score of 684 in English and math. That is not actually a passing score, that is a competency score. So you, I don't create these things, I, I'm gonna get looks, <laughs> but the, the state has said 684 means competency, um, 700 means proficiency. So if you reach those scores in that level, you satisfy that, or through the alternative pathways like you earned a college credit in math or ELA, so you took a CCP course and you earned a, a, a college credit there. Or you completed two career uh, experiences and technical skills and that's what's on this sheet here in the middle. Um, um, or you chose to enlist in the military. That also counts in the demonstrating competency category. We're still in option two. Go for it. Um, what is like the highest score you can earn on competency or whatever on that test? It can go into the 800s. They, they fiddle with the cut scores. Um, it can go to 800s. That's, that's an advanced score. Oh, okay. um, and, and we see those. Oh, okay. um, but uh, I don't know the actual ceiling. Yeah. But yeah. I was just wondering yeah. like kind of what, what the range was. Of, yeah, 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 absolutely. Thank you. Second part of option two is the demonstrating readiness part. And this is where, oh, those got really thrown around. That's okay. Um, it's the SEALs part. You earn two SEALs, that is your demonstrating competency. One of the two SEALs has to be an Ohio-designed SEAL. 
So option two has had two slides. Option one had one slide. In summary, for the class of 2022, you satisfy all the credit requirements and option one or option two. And, and, and option one consisted of one of the following, the, you know, the Ohio State test, the industry credential, or the college readiness. Option two consisted of satisfying the new demonstrating competency and demonstrating readiness, these two parts of the larger sheet. <laughs> I did not create any of this. Here's what I'll say. I know I'm making light of the graduation requirements, but the, the beautiful thing about them is that they're providing more pathways for students to not demonstrate, ju you know, just to not have one pathway um, is, is actually a great thing for our students because students have different aptitudes, they have different skills, and they can go through these different pathways to, to reach the graduation requirement. Um, I did not try to put this piece of paper in a slide format, <coughs> so I thought we could just look at that if you are ready to move on to the class of 2023 since things change. Do you have a question? I do. Okay. I do. Um, so I'm guessing that under each one of the se uh, seals on the demonstrating readiness section there yes. on, the, on the large paper, mm -hmm. there are many different uh, descriptions for what they're saying to meet those requirements. That tells, let's just take for Ohio means jobs uh, readiness seal. Uh -huh. Meet the requirements and criteria established for the readiness seal, including demonstrating demonstration of work readiness and professional competencies. So do they give examples of what these kids have to have? I mean, is there a segment under this that the kids can look at and be like, well, okay, because I mean, I mean, I'm guessing that this is basically crit notes to it help is. us get through this part. Yes. Because um, there's going to be questions, you know, there will Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And understandably so. Um, each one of these categories, I would say there's a two to three page document describing how students can attain the seal. I'll give the example for Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal. The state has outlined uh, specific skills that a student has to demonstrate and have either a school person, a counselor, or a um, adult out in the field sign off and say, yes, they demonstrate this skill. So there's a whole list of skills for Ohio Means Jobs Readiness, and then they have to have, and they have to have, um, Two people sign off on this document. Are you showing the document right now? Yeah. So it's it's very organized, and it's one of those things in which you know uh, a school counselor can vouch for um, some of the, some of those skills they see from the student in the school system, and then if the student's working or they're volunteering or doing other things, maybe the adult at the place where they're working or volunteering, their manager or whoever, signs off on some of the other ones. So there is that accountability factor of there's a lot of pieces moving there. Um, that's just Ohio Means Jobs. Some of them are actually just as they're listed. You know, the citizenship seal where you earn a score of proficient or higher on, on American history or American government, and of course, you know, the citizenship and the science and the honors and the tech, those are actually, those are pretty straightforward on this piece of paper. There's not a lot extra to those. I, I guess part of what I'm getting at here is like, w with being involved with Pirate Pack and some of the other um, charities in the area involved with four different charities um, they're going to be coming in and volunteering that will satisfy paperwork will satisfy from administration um, of those organizations that are signed for those students is that paperwork that the school is going to provide to the student or is this going to be something to be downloadable from from the website uh, or is that going to be on our website how, how is that going to be obtainable for these kids to get a hold of it and for parents who've got questions on those great questions I know it's kind of a long, drawn-out one there. No, I understood everything where you're going. Uh, the bottom three on this list of the SEALs, the Board of Education approved, as you see, adopted February 3rd last year. When you adopted that last year, I went back and created PDF forms that the counselors then use to type into and keep track so when a student comes to Pirate Packs and works five hours, they can put that five hours towards their 60 hours of community service. And so there, there are tracking systems that we put in place as soon as these pieces were adopted. Um, we try to put them all in a PDF format so that it's more transmissible and it can be used in a, in a much easier fashion. 
Our new student information system that we're moving to called PowerSchool is also going to embed this inside um, the student demographic page. So a counselor in our new system will be able to pull up just the regular student sheet and see, oh, you are pursuing all of these SEALs and here's the way we're tracking this. I also created a um, graduation tracker is what we call it. It's in a Google Sheet format, but all of this stuff will be merged into our new student information system. So it's, it's really lining up nicely right now with, as we're adopting these new pieces. Uh, you can go, I, I can ask. Did that. I get through all of yours? Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll be real quick. Um, so on top of the, uh, the community service seal with the 60 hours, um, uh, is it kind of like NHS where you can only have a certain amount of max hours for one uh, project or can they just do 60 hours of power packs or is it maxed out of five hours and then now you have to do something different? It, it doesn't max out. Oh, good. So yeah. they could just keep going back to power packs every single week yep, and yep. max it. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. Thank you. Does, does the state have a cap on how many locally defined seals a district can have? They only let us have the three. So we're at max. Yes. Unless we so wanted there's to change one there. of these to something else. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I missed what you. That's all right. Oh, there are 12 there. Nine are state defined, and so if let's just go ahead and stay in demonstrating readiness, the bottom part there. So a student must earn at least two diploma seals, one of which must be a state defined. So out of the top nine, where you can see I just uh, put a header state defined diploma seals, th one of them has to be up there. Both of them can be up there. But the locally defined seals, which you approved last February, gives some students even greater flexibility. They only gave us those three categories to create locally defined seals in. Okay. So the demonstrating competency, the middle part of this, is, you know, students have to complete each parts of these three pieces. The, the top course completion is, is pretty much the same. Uh, there has to be that financial literacy component that we're, we're uh, including in our courses. The demonstrating competency is what I alluded to for the 2022, because 2022 literally said, you can do these things, the old pathways, or you can do the demonstrating competency and the demonstrating readiness on this sheet. So that was nice flexibility, but I think it also adds to some of the confusion because we're now blending things. but. We're giving students more opportunities to demonstrate that they're ready. The demonstrating competency, the only other thing I would like to say on, on that one is the career or uh, the foundational and the supporting component of that under number two, career experience and technical skill. So it says complete two demonstrations to show competency, at least one of which must be foundational. So inside that foundational area, you see earn a score of proficient or higher on three or more web exams in a single career pathway. Many of our CTC students will be offered those exams. We do a few in-house with our business courses. Um, earn an approved industry recognized credential. Once again, CTC, that's predominantly where we do that. But this year we added a course at the high school uh, to offer two credential tests for our seniors that we wanted to provide another opportunity for them uh, to make it to graduation. So we actually are offering two industry recognized credential tests in our um, high school this year, which is a new thing. Um, complete a pre-apprenticeship in the student's chosen career field or show evidence of acceptance into an apprenticeship program. Um, we're setting up, and, and that's something that we'll be discussing in the future, uh, pre-apprenticeship structures. Um, the apprenticeship component in Ohio is um, they put this into law, and then schools said, okay, where's it at then? And so a lot of the schools went out and looked at Apprentice Ohio and looked at all of the companies that are approved as apprentice, and in some of the industry areas, there are no companies. Uh, now, in other of the industry areas, there are a multitude of companies, but they're typically higher order, more complicated, rigorous industry areas. Um, so we're taking the approach and, and some other districts are, are starting to do this as well as, well, we can create some apprentice programs in-house. So uh, Mr. Haig and I have sat down and discussed uh, six different types of apprentice programs we think we are going to apply for, we know we're going to apply for and see how those um, 
get approved and be able to offer those to students in the future. So that's exciting. And how, how is that going to work? And like, what what category would that be in? Just uh, just example one or two of them. Just sure, sure. Um, we talked about custodial. Like, if you go to the Apprentice Ohio, you're going to find fourteen hundred categories. Um, and we talked about uh, <laughs> the one that's coming to my mind is the ceiling tile one. Just because I was looking through this list, and I, I asked Mr. Haig, I said, you know, is that something we could really offer? And, you know, <laughs> right off, he's like, yeah, absolutely. We spend so much time with our uh, maintenance staff going around and replacing ceiling tiles to actually offer that as an apprentice and to teach a student how to do those things. And uh, it's, it sort of sounds different and unique, but if, if we could offer that and that, you know, that's sort of a quirky example, there are some other maintenance ones we could do, some grounds ones we could do. That's at least three of the six that I know we were looking at. Um, but it's, it's just providing those opportunities for students that if they're not reaching something through all these other pathways, we're sort of at risk of graduating. So we're, we're trying to provide additional routes. Um, this, oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, on the college ready seal, actually it's a two part. What is the remediation free scores on ACT and SAT now? And I'd heard word that they were going to try and do away with ACT and SAT. I mean, colleges are now starting to go a different direction, so. Presently for ELA and math, it's 22. So in ELA, it's 22 and math, it's 22. Um, that is something that the state decides every year what that remediation score will be. Um, three years ago, it was 18 and 18. So it took a quite a bit of a jump. Sure. Um, the ACT conversation, which you, you've heard about, is mm -hmm. to say, do we require ACT anymore for juniors? Mm -hmm. um, since that's a pathway, I think even if the state said, no, we're not going to do it, well, if they keep that cut score where it's at, I would at least want to offer the opportunity. Sure. Um, yeah. But as you know, last week or two weeks ago, you know, we shut down the high school to do the ACT. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's quite an undertaking because we do it by paper because that's what a student experiences if they take it again. So we keep it in the same medium. Okay. Yeah, you know, Thank like you. UD has quit taking all ACT, SAT scores. They do in-house testing now, mm -hmm. placement yeah. test. Yeah. Um, Sinclair will probably follow that soon. So it's, I, I was just kind of was going to ask the same question, but some of the other colleges are going to be going to that pretty quick. So if they can keep the seal because we can still offer the testing and still give them the opportunity to earn a seal, then mm -hmm. we should just keep a hold of it. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's fine. And it'll be one of those interesting things because the ACT is very rigid and very specific in how mm -hmm. we must offer the assessment. Right. Um, and there's no deviating from it or you can't be a test site. That's why we go to the extreme we do at the high school to actually – augment the day and say only juniors are coming in and we're doing it like this um, mm. they they are inflexible which is funny as people are saying no thank you um, I just got a quick question up top again real quick the students must receive instruction in economics and financial literacy literacy is this something that's going to be governed by the state as far as what we have to offer at the high school level the or can we develop our own program the uh, state recently passed another law this year this school year to uh, further define what that has to look like. Mm -hmm. Previously to this law passing a couple months ago, it could be embedded within courses. The law now states it has to be a standalone course. They already have the standards on uh, ODE's website, so you can go out and look at the financial literacy standards, and many of them uh, overlap with economics standards um, and some other content area standards, business standards. Um, so really the only change that has happened to this recently is for the state to come out and say it has to be a standalone and you have to implement it by this date. So we met uh, with Ms. Hafner at the high school and said, all right, new, new mandate, so how do we phase this in and pull it out of the courses it's in because it now has to be a standalone. And, and we mapped out how we're going to do that over the next three years. It just seems like some of the stuff that the state has mandated in years past doesn't really apply to a lot of kids at the right timing. Um, like, I know checkbooks are on the way out, but most kids don't know how to keep a checkbook. Most kids don't understand annual percentage rates on credit cards. They don't understand what happens when you overdraw your account. They don't get all that kind of stuff. They get, um, what's the one in middle school we, we teach right now? Um, 
the course we teach in middle school. It's we have a seventh grade business course. Uh, a business and finance, is that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. yeah. My, my seventh grader was like, why? I'm a seventh grader. Mm-hmm. I can't even drive yet, so I don't have any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But to, do, we have the, do we have the power in our district to switch some of those things up, or is it still going to be a curriculum based out of the state, not out of us? Uh, the standards give us the flexibility to make it applicable to where students are at, and you hit on something that we actually made a point to implement, which was this doesn't make a lot of sense even for a freshman. So right. let's put it later, like a junior, yeah. when you're getting ready and you're thinking your mindset is changing. So um, we we chose uh, in curriculum to say, hey, this needs to come later. There, there are certain things, you know, like interest rates, investing, appreciation, depreciation. How to read your pay stub. Well, I don't know a lot of freshmen that are watching the stock market or things of that. Yeah. Kudos to you if they are, but, you know, there are certain things we, we should just wait for a little more maturity to introduce. Yeah, and my, my thoughts were if they're not able to even get a job yet because they're not old enough, then why teach it because it's not applicable. Yep. So once they're able to drive and get a job or they qualify as far as age, then we teach that curriculum because then it applies to their daily stuff. You know, as far as even as having some of the kids that have their own jobs bring in a pay stub so we can explain to you and go over with other kids yeah. why we're getting this money taken out. Yeah. I mean, my old, my youngest is just like, I can't believe how much I work and how little I take home. Welcome to adulthood. Yes. <laughs> it's the thing you've been wanting all this time, a job, right? Yeah, yeah. and freedom. So yeah. Good luck with that. I just wanted to add on top of that. I know uh, at our business, whatever meeting that we went to, was it last month? Business Advisory Council? Yeah, uh, there is a uh, person, a principal, I think, from Mad River Schools, and he said that they go kind of around that in learning, like, credit card because they have their own credit card company that's a part of the school where kids can actually get their own credit card and learn I mean through that age so it's kind of neat how they kind of went around the bend there Mm -hmm. because they're not teaching in the schools they just have a credit card company within the school now that I mean kind of teaches them how to you know credit card stuff I don't know but uh, I just thought that was an interesting concept that they added into their school system long time ago we used to have farmers and i was waiting for it yeah <laughs> yes we had we had a uh we were approved by farmers merchant long before you were here you know um we actually had up in the main office a little teller area yeah that's why if you go by the main office you'll see the glass on the window pane is different mm-hmm. so can i ask why we stopped that just didn't work or I actually left before me so that was oh that really? was yeah. No one no used, used it? it. Oh, <laughs> really? I abused it. I was like, what? Oh, no. no. That's surprising. I came it in seems 2006, like now and everyone it, was, it was shut down before me. So. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We started it up, and then it, uh-uh. Wow. That's it was at 45% you know. interest rate. And uh, probably, that's why. Probably, yeah. yeah. Mr. Myers, <laughs> could you step back? Um, we offered as offered or do offer a seventh grade financial basics <coughs> yes where should it be I was you kind of had that conversation but oh about the, the curriculum where should the curriculum be um, that is appropriate for uh, the state also says you have to have a seventh grade and an eighth grade exposure to career and career readiness so we're actually bolstering up and adding an eighth grade component in um, we have the seventh grade component and what um, it's, it's Julie Reynolds who teaches it uh, presently. And, and what she does is the middle school version of Ohio Means Jobs, that first seal, and starts introducing those topics to students. Um, she also does U Science. There's a middle school version of U Science. I talked to before about the a career aptitude test we implemented at the high school. Um, there's the high school version, and there's a middle school version. So uh, she's doing a lot of career exposure. And, s- and the middle school version of exposing students to financial pieces, um, it's not the exact same depth as the financial literacy high school standards, financial literacy high school standards go deeper. So it's an introduction. Freshman year, sophomore? For the high school, we're, pr- we're gonna put that at the junior level where we feel like it's, it's more appropriate. Thank you. I've jumped all over the place. What do you, uh, do you have any other questions on this? I mean, it's, it's all, 
confusing at times, and uh, there, there are many pathways, but honestly, even though I make light of it, I think the pathways are extremely beneficial to the students. Um, <laughs> let's see, it's not worth the paper it's written? No, uh, it, it is. Um, it is, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's uh, stressing out counselors as they chase things down, but we're also providing the means by which they can put that in our new systems and be able to track and, and um, not lose sight of any of the moving pieces, which there are much more on it. There are much more of them. And just to clarify, the Miami Valley Career Technical Center is a junior year test site currently for ACT. Yes. So you don't necessarily have to test at your home high school. An alternate site would be the CTC. Yes. But the CTC also controls youth connections. We pull back the youth connection kids and test here. There are some other um, additional sites we use for students for credit recovery we pull them back and test here. But if you're out of CTC in the robotics program, you test there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. On to item 11. We have some discussion to go over. We do. Do you want to read the blurb or do you want me to? following topics will be discussed by the Board of Education. The public is invited to observe this discussion. Um, usually the board does not take action, but we will tonight. Um, this is the second reading of our policies. Um, so I will go ahead and go through our policies that I read last month. Policy uh, 1616 and 5511, staff dress and grooming. Staff needs to look professional. Policy 2266, adding Title um, IX coordinators. Policy 2271, College Credit Plus. Um, boys have to register for selective service or parents must pay for classes and fees. Colleges cannot take Ohio Department of Education money if they are not registered. Policy 237001, blended learning. They added paper activities. Policy 5772 and 7217, weapons. They added language to include weapons that include explosives. This changes to the revised code 109.78 and revised code 2923.122. Policy 6110, grant funds, added language to include maintenance of effort and maintenance of equity. Policy 6114 and 6325, changes to Edgar regarding Davis-Bacon prevailing wages of $2,000 and prohibits specific costs incurred for telecommunications and video surveillance equipment. Policy 6423 added the treasurer and CFO as the holder of the credit cards, which is where mine sits. Um, policy 7455 change um, estimate lives of buildings from 40 years to 60 years. And policy 8500, we cleaned up the language for non-disabled students and parental requirements for substitutions of food. Any questions? Yeah. Two very quick ones. Um, I was just wondering, uh, with rereading through these, um, the 40 to 60 year uh, difference, or not difference, but 40 to change it to 60, um, what's the kind of implications of uh, something like that? Is there any? Big changes or? Well, first of all, we're getting new buildings, so that's the one thing. And the lifespan of the buildings, obviously, there are buildings are over four years. So um, we're not the only district that changed that. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. Just that the reality is, I mean, the, you know, we hope that the buildings last 60 or 70 years, not not 40. And uh, it's just it's more accurate to depreciate them over 60 as opposed to 40 years. Okay. Okay. And then my second question. Um, the superintendent, well, of course you, have you always been able to establish a uh, dress code or is this just a brand new thing or? Th these are not new policies, they're just updating. Yeah, that's what I thought, okay. I was just wondering. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? 
see the motion in a second? Nope, we don't vote on them until the end. It okay. will come up in at the 12th. Yeah. Um, hang on, it comes up at the end of the meeting. Um, eight, item 18, you will vote on these. So um, the next one is to review policy 2431. I was asked to put this back on um, interscholastic athletics and it's for discussion and um, it's about, we, we talked about a little bit about this before um, adhering to the 2.0 and giving a little bit of latitude to our athletic director for extenuating circumstances or um, you know, for our special education students um, meeting their goals. And um, Leslie, you asked me to put well, this Well, yes, I, I did because I, I feel like we've got a lot of circumstances here. We, we have, were told of the basketball player um, that couldn't go because of not having grades put in and, and our athletic director couldn't help them at that point. Um, and I believe that we've got other kids that have succumbed to illness. And then the way our grading structure is that once you do that and you're out, trying to recover is virtually impossible. So they had the grade point average to begin with and then it fell and then there was no way to recover. And I. I feel like this is a group situation that perhaps our athletic director, the principal, our counselor, it's a group type of situation. They all get together and figure out what were the circumstances when the, when the student was doing so well to begin with, then it happened, now we have this. Is this something that can be corrected or is going to be corrected and uh, can go. Evan, do you want to come down and help out a little bit on this? I mean, I see it from a coach's standpoint. Yeah, so um, originally, obviously with COVID, it kind of, um, you know, once you miss a test or two and fall behind, um, it's a process to make everything up. Um, the concern with winter was IEP students, um, but we've, we've worked on that. Um, you know, we, we're now working with uh, two student athletes looking ahead at the spring that are on IEPs. Um, both are meeting all of their goals um, of their IEP and I'm talking to their case managers and uh, Mrs. Hafner. Um, and it's one of those things like we've talked about, um, you know, the carrot to the rabbit, if it's the thing that's gonna, you know, if they need to play a sport or feel like they're a part of a team to um, keep them engaged, especially um, in the spring when it gets nice out, whatever. But um, it's just one of those things where if if we're comfortable with you know me talking with Mrs. Hafner and you know it's it's been assistant uh, principals because you just really have to find who the kids are confiding in. Um, mm -hmm. You know you can always tell when someone's like oh yeah something you know they kind of hint at it, um, and until we can kind of figure out what's going on. Um, telling kids to just stay away um, could potentially lead to issues. Um, and we're looking at maybe one to three kids a quarter or a season um, that this may apply to. Um, and hopefully, obviously with COVID behind us now, it, it may be down to one or two. And that would just be the um, IEP kids or, um, you know, we've had kids that have gone to the hospital for, you know, things like that, um, where you know they're good kids that take care of their schoolwork and stuff, but sometimes something happens outside of school. Um, that's really all it is. I would like to uh, put that extenuating circumstances into the policies so that our athletic director would have a little bit of leniency for those types of situations. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. Um, I think that's a great idea. Um, life happens sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and I, it, it, it's sometimes, you know, if you take away something else because life happens, it's just making it harder for the kid. So I fully understand that, um, you know, we should have a provision for that because it will happen at some points where life will come in the way and you just have to find a way to make it work. And, you know, I think that's a great idea. 
I don't um, I don't oppose an extenuating circumstance. I guess I would I would add though that if there's a caveat like this that we have um, acceptable details shared with us, student names obviously can't be, but um, occurrences of when this actually takes effect, so we can see if it becomes enormous or not, or if it stays really minor like you're describing it today. That would be something I would be interested to see. I feel comfortable giving you a number, but not any other details. Right. Yeah. I'm okay with that. If the number now is two or three, and in two or three years explodes to 10 or 12, it, it would seem to me that it's, ta it's being taken advantage of, I guess would be my point. Right. That's, that's not what we want. No, huh? A and these aren't the kids that you know we had talked about when they want to play a sport and to get their grades up. They had their grades up, and then catastrophe right. struck and then so now we're trying to balance and get it and and they do have the OHSAA uh, requirements in which is the five credit hours so they've already got that it's just trying to get them there and they will they will go on and a, and a lot of times with this um, we saw it with um, soccer with COVID shutdowns mm -hmm. um, it was kids that are you know, never on our radar for grades. Um, mm -hmm. But we were kind of going under the policy of if you don't have a 2.0, when we do the weekly grade check, you're not practicing. Um, and that shouldn't happen anymore. Um, like I said, this <coughs> this is something where usually if something big comes out up, up outside of your, you know, school life, um, the coaches are more concerned with, you know, getting that figured out mm -hmm. um, and making sure that they're okay before playing them. Um, it's more just if we're going to not allow them to, if it's at the end of a quarter or something, stick with the team. Um, you know, maybe we make them a manager where they're not playing or practicing, but they're still coming and um, checking in with the coach. Um, I can't ever tell you when there's a season where it would be more than three, and that's including IEPs and stuff, which just um, were never really factored in to start. But I think. Working with the working and communicating with everybody, um, I'm definitely okay with um, doing a number. It's that shouldn't be an issue. Everybody knows that I've taken a hard stance on the 2.0. Um, I understand that life happens. Um, that is not what my stance was on. And during the last two years ish, um, the no fault stuff because of the COVID, um, I thought was playing part of the 2.0 stuff because it should have. Um, if they're out with COVID or any sickness for that matter, yeah. uh, if they right. have a cancer, if, whatever it may be, most of that's not our business. But if they're out with that situation, I'm okay with that. Yeah. What I don't want it to become is an opportunity to be taken advantage of. Right. right. None oh, of us no. do. We uh, don't want that I'm just voicing my opinion here. Um, I, I do not want to be anything less than a 2.0 school. I want to make sure that we hold our mm -hmm. students accountable, and this is a privilege it's, it's not a given. Um, just because we have sports doesn't mean everybody gets to go out for it because you have to earn that, be the student first. Um, that, that's my hard stance on that. Yeah. Um, I understand that there are life issues. Mm -hmm. um, we've all been through them, we all have a story, but again, everybody has a story. Yeah. So as long as you're willing to take responsibility for, uh, with, with Ms. Hafner and whoever else you wanna get involved in that, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of with John, I would like to know what those numbers are. I don't have to know details. Yeah. Um, but it's but to make sure that we're we stay within that one to three ish one to four ish, we and get pushing up around ten. Then I, I think yeah. we're going to be yeah, yeah we yeah yeah. Too, yeah yeah we wouldn't and and the the thing that we're trying to do is um, you know we're bringing in coaches that are academics first. Um, that's the priority because you know like our our new football coach for example, um, first thing he asked all the kids were what's your GPA? You know we need to see where you are. Um, and it's just educating the younger kids that, um, you know, middle school is whatever, but once you hit eighth grade, eighth grade, we're focusing on what you need to do, bigger picture kind of thing, and preparing you for um, whatever you want to do, if it's go to college, if it's you know, any kind of scholarship. A lot of the kids that signed yesterday were not, um, you know, full ride athletic scholarships, and that's one of the things that we're most proud of is all those kids were brilliant students, and that's, that's what we want from our student athletes.
what I loved about that picture is I've coached all but one of those kids over the years at one time or another. Yeah. And you were talking about Luke. Um, he's a very good basketball player, baseball player. Yeah, he, can um, he can do, do it all. Uh, yeah. and, and it kind of runs in that family. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. But it's, it's, I take great pride in looking at that picture. And yeah. I was like, you know, I've, done, I've coached all but one of those kids big, over the years. So it's great to see that. Yep. But that's just my hard stance on the 2.0. Uh, as long as we're not taking advantage of and it and you've got two or three others with you that make those calls, if it's you, the coach, and Ms. Hafner, and possibly the teacher there, that's yeah. fine. Um, the other issue that I've got is the progress book has always been a nightmare. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, I, and I know we're leaving that yes. behind. Yeah, it's just taking us way too long to get there. Yeah. Um, I get so tired of hearing my kids say, I turned it in. I turned it in. It's just not posted because yeah. my kid gets recommended at home before he gets recommended yeah. here. Exactly. And if it's not turned in, then yep. he takes the heat there. That's but nine times out of ten, that's the first thing a kid says to me is I turned this in. Um, and then it's just checking with the teacher and especially with the weighted, the weighted you know, assessments and stuff. Like if you're out for one assessment, um, say, you know, something happens at home, you can't come to school, not your fault, you miss an assessment, and then you're back, everything's fine. Um, you know, a lot it's of extra work for you, yeah. and it shouldn't be. So I hope the new program that we're going to yeah. be enlisting is – should be so much easier. It'll be way better, better than yeah. this. Save a lot of time. My kid won't be involved then, but <laughs> others will be. Yeah. All right, thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. So well. I just – I have a comment. Um, so if we were to look at that policy – we could add it to the policy adoption and just come up with the verbiage here yeah. during the discussion. Um, I'll pull it up. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just encourage that it, if we're going to, to work on wording here for a minute, um, extenuating circumstances sounds perfectly appropriate for what we're talking about. And then on the reporting side, maybe just um, asking for um, – I don't know, semi-annual report, something maybe at the conclusion of the fall season and then again at the conclusion of spring maybe? Yeah, I think Two I reporting think periods, sound fair? Yeah. I think that would work. So, so if we I could tweak it to say that, I think that would cover what we've talked about. I think if we put in here where it says, um, in addition to the eligibility requirements established by o Ohio High School Athletic Association, the following is mandatory. Um, for extracurricular activities, the students must have maintained at least a 2.0 grade point average um, for the grading period previous to the one which he or she wishes to participate. Um, we could add a statement in there right mm -hmm. after. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, just like you had in here, adhere to the 2.0 and give latitude to athletic director for extenuating circumstances. Okay. I mean, I would say medical or hardship, family hardship, stuff, stuff like that would okay, qualify. Yeah. So if that's uh -huh. yeah, adhere yeah. to the 2.0, give it latitude. Um, just add this statement right here. Yeah. Okay. And Evan, if this gets to be too much on you and you can't get the help that you need, you need to come back to us. Or at least let us know what's going on, and see if we can take a different direction with it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to need to be a board involvement because it's your job. Yeah. Um, but if we can help and we can get updates, I think that'll help all of us. Yeah, and I think we need to get something that the transition is very time consuming to them, but now um, maybe the board could be a role in that, right? Okay, so you'll need a, a motion and a second to modify this and add it. Okay. That verbiage, and then I can have Tammy change it. So I will need a motion and a second on 15, is that right? You to, well, to make a change. Make a change. So. All right, I need a motion and a second to amend. Uh, do Robert's rules here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To make a change. I'll motion. Second. So you're motioning to add policy 2431 to item number 18, adding the language um, to that paragraph exactly as written here adhere to the 2.0 and give latitude to the athletic director for extenuating circumstances. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Uh, Ryan? <laughs> He's scribbling, yeah, scribbling away. Strand? Yep. Uh, Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yes.
That's all I have for discussion. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to item number 12, Mr. Barry. Good evening. <coughs> Superintendent recommends that the board approve the following personnel items. Item 12A, hire the listed individual on a salary notice for the 2021-2022 school year. Item 12B, accept the ratification to conditionally employ the listed substitute teacher um, for the 2021-2022 school year, pending approval by the Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation and Consensual Drug Screening as required by Ohio Revised Code 3319.291 and the policies of the West Carrollton City School District and 12C. Accept the request for the listed individual to return from an unpaid leave of absence during the 2021-2022 school year. And 12D, amend um, the salary of the two individuals due to additional training, effective the beginning of the third quarter for the 2021-2022 school year. Item 12E, amend the following paid leave of absence for the, the individual. And 12F, grant an unpaid leave of absence to the listed individual for the 2022-2023 school year. So moved. Second. Mr. Sloan? Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Item number 13, sir. Item 13, the superintendent recommends that the board approve the following personnel items. Item 13A, grant a supplemental people activity contract to the listed individuals for the 2021-2022 school year. Item 13B, grant a supplemental people activity contract to the listed individual for the 2022-2023 school year. And item 13C, approve uh, the listed individual as an athletic event worker for the 2021-2022 school year. And item 13D, approve the three individuals as volunteers for the 2021-2022 school year. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Slow. Roll call. Mrs. Miller? Abstain. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. <coughs> Item number 14, Mr. Berry. Superintendent recommends that the board approve the following personnel items. Item 14A, accept the resignation of the listed individual for disability retirement purposes. 14B, accept the resignation of the two listed individuals for retirement purposes. And 14C, accept the ratification to conditionally employ the following individual uh, pending approval by the Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation and Consensual Drug Screening as required by Ohio Revised Code 3319.291 and the policies of the West Carrollton City School District. And then 14D, conditionally employ the listed individual pending approval by the Bureau of Criminal Identification and Investigation and consensual drug screening as required by Ohio Revised Code 3319.291 and the policies of the West Carrollton City School District. 14E, accept the ratification of the transfer and promotion of the listed individual. And item 14F, amend the medical leave of absence for the listed individual. Need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Any comments? Uh, I wanted to congratulate um, Robert Johnson uh, for the work that he's done for the district and um, 
uh, such a vital role in our district of, of keeping the internet as, as much as we rely on it as a district for instruction as well as our day-to-day -day work. Um, I think he's done a really good job in getting us to this point and he's gonna help us um, you know, build a bridge for the next person. But I think, um, yeah, he'll, he'll be missed. His uh, Christmas email, um, <laughs> as well as his, his normal gruff nature. Uh, I think he, you know, he's a, um, I'd say, uh, you know, a, a definitely guarded, but um, a really nice guy, you know, <laughs> he would probably. How long was he with us? How many years is that? What is it, 20? 24. 24. Goodness, You'll be missed. Yes, he is a chief. Great. Yeah, thanks, sir. Thank you. Item number 15. Mr. Haig. Yes, thank you. Um, the superintendent recommends that the board approve as presented the amendment to the owner consultant agreement with Bowser Warner Inc. for the new PK1 and 56 building project. I need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Second. Any roll call? Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wallen? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Any comments? Yeah, just to let you know, they're a consultant that we hire and they do third party testing. So, for example, if they're pouring concrete, they take a scoop of that concrete, put it out, make sure it's got the right pressure testing and everything else so we're getting quality products. They inspect all the uh, rafters, all the girders, all the steel to make sure it's welded and installed properly per the project. Um, their cost comes from two things, one travel time and the hours they work. Um, on a project like this, if we have concrete guys to start at four in the morning and work till seven o'clock at night, these guys have to be on site. So their hours, you know, they estimate their hours to begin with. Because they've worked more hours, that's why we have to amend this and raise it to pay for them for their hourly wage. Numbers um, 16. Okay. Um, the superintendent recommends that the board approve as presented the contract between, uh, or I'm sorry, the contract agreement with Plains Commercial Services for Moving Services. I need a motion and a second, please. So, so moved. Second. Mr. Sloan? Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Abstain. We are 10 weeks away from moving in. I, it sounds odd to say it. Um, admin is more like eight weeks away from moving in over there to the district office. So it is coming and it's coming quickly and it's steamrolling right now. So it is, uh, there's a lot going on and um, our time is growing short until we're sitting in a new room over there holding a board meeting in a different setting. Mm -hmm. So but that'll that'll be later on. That'll be August probably before we get to that point. Still exciting. Once we get that technology in there and rolling. So but it's coming quick. Awesome. Thank you. Is there any way we can do a tour maybe? Well I was gonna bring that up when I was talking this oh, evening. Okay. But if you can all think about a good time and a date we can get together and you can either text me or email me that what you think and then I'll get with Mr. Haig and we'll uh, we'll line something up. Okay. Like tomorrow, like at, you know, noon? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Take it. Well, we'll have to say, uh, something Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's not, let's not oh, yeah. deviate from that plan. Uh, no. I'm just giving you a hard time. I know you guys got a lot going on. All right. Item number 17, Mr. Sloan. Thank you. I ask that the board approve as presented the financial items, item A, appropriation modifications, and item B, February 24th. 22 financial reports. I need a motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. Any roll call? Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Any comments? Uh, the reports, these are for eight months, uh, July through the end of February. Um, Things are going well in, uh, in terms of looking to end the year a little bit better. Um, when we get to June 30, then, then the forecast, so things are running well. Any questions? 
Okay. Auto number 18. Made a motion in a second that the board adopt as presented the proposed policies of the West Carrollton Board of Education, including policy 2431. Made a motion in a second, please. So moved. Second. And roll call, please. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Brings us to our comments and reports. Yep, to committee reports. Uh, committee reports, anybody? Yes, we can always do. Yeah, I'll start down there. Do, yeah, we'll just start down. Uh, uh, Mr. Henry, go ahead. Um, I was appointed for this calendar year to serve um, uh, our Board of Education mm -hmm. with the Miami Valley Career Technical Center. Last week was yeah. Monday night. I was at the Trotwood um, council meeting because the CTC supported a construction effort and a tax abatement uh, in that geographic area. Tuesday night. I was at Wilmington, Ohio for the OSBA, Ohio School Board Association regional meeting. Um, Wednesday night was the actual CTC board meeting and those were all important things but made for a heavy week um, and, and that's a good thing. But what I wanted to make uh, you aware of was that um, there's been 1,398 applications for next school year for incoming juniors to attend programs at the CTC. They can't handle that many. They're not set for that many. Plus the seniors, the current juniors that'll move in to seniors in their program. So there'll be some, um, there is right now some consideration of which applicants will be accepted into the CTC this coming fall. Mr. Myers to kind of help me present that information based on your experience. For our district. I do, thank you. Um, Mrs. Corbett, could you assist me please? I have a copy and then staff members if possible I will do me one. Thank you. Uh, it should be a minute so just go ahead. So um, Mrs. Corbett's helping me with a um, document that I brought from the CTC and um, It's, it's interesting how many um, uh, students um, are attending and what programs they're participating in. But the one I want to bring out is called, um, put your glasses on. Information technology. 
um, call that what you want to, but the program officially is called Information Technology. It supports so many activities, not just what it's labeled to be. And um, there's nine total students. Um, involved in this, but they shut the door. They can't handle anymore, if, if you understand where I'm going with that. So, um, and then secondly on this handout, look at the number of students where CTC graduates are continuing their education. Um, that surprised me. I don't know if it surprises you as well, but um, that is important that they are continuing their education. They're not just stopping at the two years at CTC. But most of these students, if they're not continuing their education, they'll be employed before they graduate from their home school and the CTC. <coughs> they have jobs waiting for them. And Mr. Mundy. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I had, I guess I'll consider it two committee meetings. Um, the first one was uh, was the athletic control. Yeah, that was uh, very interesting. A lot of great information. Um, I'm guessing you'll probably say a few more things. Uh, I'll, I'll just go take two takeaways that I really enjoyed out of that. Um, one was uh, the no cash idea. Um, just an interesting idea that, I mean, it's kind of growing throughout not only local, but if you go to any stadiums, you mean bigger stadiums like Paul Brown or things like that, they're pretty much in the same boat. So it seems like it's just becoming a thing. And then another thing, I never know. Uh, uh, Evan, uh, Ivory mentioned, uh, they let the kids kind of be a part of uh, hiring people or hiring uh, coaches. And I just love how the kids have a voice in that as well. I just think that's such a cool idea. And uh, giving, those, uh, giving those kids a voice to uh, kind of choose who they think might be best is uh, so interesting to me. And uh, it seems like they make pretty good choices. So, And then, of, oh, of course, this morning we had our big district leadership. Yeah, it, uh, you know, of course, all the – all the people come, and I mean, it's just one of those uh, big events, it seems like. But uh, um, great information, of course, you know, a lot of great data, and um, I don't know, there's just a lot of takeaways from there, too, but too much to list. So I would uh, just like to say it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good meet. So I would, I would kind of just throw out there, Dr. Townsend, assuming you're going to be here for the next, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, that maybe <laughs> – as we have, we're going to have new board members soon. I mean, Joe's on his way out in a couple of years. I'm on my way out in a couple of years. So I'm just thinking as we get new people, what what um, Nate is doing, being part of that, might be a good idea for new ones. That's, that's all I was going to interject. But Lots to learn. Lots to learn. I think it's helping him. Yeah, that's great. I'm looking to move in two years. It's all right. That's okay. I'm outside <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the allergies here in yeah, Sinus right. Valley, I'd probably hate. No, that's not true. Uh, not the Florida, going to Georgia. Miss Miller. Ah, well, I'll tell y'all in two or three years what I was asking about in my short or small amount of time. I haven't really got back to it. But a um, couple of things, um, and, and Miss Wagner has uh, leadership. She has done a nicely work on her own sports medicine um, our girls um, the volleyball girls soccer uh, they have been really getting a lot of benefits from from all of that so uh, 
it, it's nice, uh, the Orient Sports Medicine. Um, plus, uh, uh, it's become that time of the year where the football helmets need to be redone. And so it looks like we may have to buy 33 new helmets. <laughs> um, and uh, basically what it's gonna be is they're going to buy this chunk and then they'll integrate them every year. So it's buy a few more each year and, and keep it going. Um, because we always need, and, and especially with our new football coach, we're gonna have a lot more kids. So that's gonna add to it. Um, the only other thing that <clears throat> he had said he would like an academic advisor position. He had brought that to the, the Board of Control. He would like it to be full-time, uh, meet with student athletes, work with the parents when possible, connect the student athletes with tutors, oversee the study table, and work with coaches on weekly eligibility. That's something he's probably going to be bringing to us because it's quite a job to keep all the kids together. So, so that's it. That's all I had. Mr. Wallen. Um, I have two things to share. Um, one, one starts with the legislative liaison task that um, I really, there's not been a, a lot to report because most of these committees haven't met much. And, um, but I will share this, and I think Dr. Townsend alluded to this last meeting too, it has to do with substitute teachers. And in case you're not aware, um, the House Bill 583 is the only one I'm gonna share about for a minute. Um, it's had its second hearing in the House um, Education Committee. It had 10 um, witnesses, all school districts except for um, some of the associations spoke, all were um, in support of this. There were no opposition witnesses yet, at least. And I wanna share a couple things about it. Um, I, I think even OSBA shared with us in our round table stuff that they don't really think this will have a problem passing, but there, are, there is some interesting aspect to it. According to the analysis, that's all I read. I cannot go through one of those bills, even a short one, and try to understand it all, but on the analysis part, it does uh, share the, that there's, a, there's gonna be a difference if this doesn't get changed with uh, allowing for substitutes not to have to have the four-year degree through 2025, which I think Dr. Townsend shared that, that, uh, that date with us last time, and it is in there, June 30th of 2025, but it does say in the analysis that if a sub subs for six days consecutive in the same classroom or longer, there will be rules attached to that. And in the bill, the rules are that that particular substitute has to be 21 years old and then has to meet one of four options. So they gotta be 21 and they either have to have an associate's degree, 60 credit hours toward a bachelor's degree, uh, be an honorably discharged person from the military or have worked as an education assistant for five years. The bill also says if it's five days or less that the school gets to choose the criteria for that. So I thought that was interesting that, that they uh, make a, a difference between the five and six days. And, but it does sound like it, it's probably gonna happen. Whether that stays in there or not or gets tweaked could be uh, could be a difference there, but the other thing I would share is um, our finance committee will meet next week on the 24th, and as I shared a um, few meetings ago, um, I do want that committee to look at the uh, prospect of giving us their feedback about what a policy would look like for us when it comes to, or a resolution when it comes to a levy. Um, doc Mr. Sloan here, I'm about called you doctor, uh, Mr. Sloan here has sent me some some good helpful information on what some other districts do and um, I think I think this might be uh, a conversation that our committee has for maybe a couple of meetings before we ever ever bring something back to the board and uh, whatever we decide you guys may decide to tweak it or ignore it or whatever that's totally up to the board here but I think it's at least a good conversation to have to tell the community here's what uh, the Board of Education thinks is 
the parameters around going back on the ballot. And um, I think for, I'm not going to sit here for too many more years, and when I am basically sitting out there again, it, it just would be good to know what the board thinks is a good reason to go on a ballot. Not just, I mean, we need, we always need money. Every district would always say that, except for the few that are 100% funded, I guess. But even they would probably in a year or two say, well, we got to start looking at how we're going to save money or how we're going to raise more money. So uh, it seems to be never ending. But uh, when we do meet next week on the 24th, uh, when we meet in April, again, we'll share what I can about that. If we even, I doubt we come to a resolution after one meeting, but we'll share what we do talk about. Thank you. Mrs. Corbett, if you would support me on this, please. On the district website, there's a um, tab for our um, facilities construction reporting, and there's a report <coughs> each week. I just happened to print off so I could remember to share that with you. Um, that website is providing us, the community, photographs of the current process of our uh, construction phase. And um, I would invite you to go to the district website, to that page, and take a look-see, because we can speak to this um, a lot but some of us need to see visual reports um, uh, of the progress that's going on so rapidly now in completion of the, pr the uh, construction process. And as Mr. Hag said, it's only 10 weeks away to our completion date and move in uh, to the two new buildings. So. You're welcome. All righty, comments from our superintendent. Thank you. Um, Janine, your page has been viewed over 8,000 times for the construction project, so that's good. Um, I'd like to wish Robert uh, a fantastic retirement. He will be missed. His knowledge and his dedication to this district has been phenomenal. Um, good luck to our robotics team this weekend. Um, that should be a lot of fun. I've kind of perused. I can't find a link yet either, but I'm sure we'll get it shortly. And I hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable spring break. I can't believe it's already spring break. <laughs> I feel like I was just wishing everybody Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, yes. And it is St. Patrick's Day. Please wear green so our little ones don't pinch you. <laughs> well, anything tonight? Uh, also, just want to say congratulations and best wishes to Mr. Johnson. Um, I have greatly enjoyed working with him and talking with him. And just as a follow-up to the uh, to Jack's item about the moving, um, we have a lot of records back in our area that we're kind of going through, doing a lot of spring cleaning, um, a little bit of shredding. And um, so we're looking forward, looking forward to the move. Okay. We do not have anybody here from the Education Association or the Classifieds. Um, comments from Central Office, Mr. Barry. Mr. Haig. Dr. Myers, anything? All right. Moving right on to comments from our board, Mr. Mundy. I'll let you jump off there quickly. Or turn this on first. I uh, I just want to say um, for the signing day kids, um, of course, a lot of them I knew when I was in high school. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see them all grown up and moving on with their lives. Just fantastic stuff there. Um, I uh, I'm just so grateful for them and to see them do uh, so many amazing things is is just really uh, fantastic to see. And then uh, also uh, for student reps. Um, I just I just love when they have passion to do these things, and I hope anyone that wants to be a part of that, I hope they um, they really go for it. And, you know, I, of course, 
that would come with a quote. And the quote is, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. And that's by Walt Disney. And I really hope, um, I mean, for student reps out there, if they, um, if, if they want to have their voice and really show it, and if they have a passion, you mean, to uh, please be a part of that and, you mean, see what we do. And, uh, yeah, that's all I needed to say. Thank you. I've said enough. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Miller. Um, just a couple things. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the farewell tour for CF Holiday is April 16th. So um, it, it'll be a, a great day, I'm sure. I know I've seen a lot of chatter on Facebook about this. So there are a lot of people that are coming and uh, want to go through the school again. And as soon as we know the other date for the um, Walter Shade ECC, we'll know. We'll give that out as well. Um, the, uh, I want to wish uh, Robert a, uh, a, a fun and uh, hopefully that bunny plane will take you to warm and, and sunny places. Um, he has been a, such a, a, a great asset to this district. Uh, we have had our share of technology issues over the years and he has always had a solution. So uh, I wish him all the best. That's it. Mr. Llewellyn. Um, ditto on uh, Mr. Johnson. Congratulations, sir. I hope you enjoy being retired. I don't get a feel. I get the feeling he's not going to just sit at home and do nothing, though. But um, <clears throat> most people don't, I suppose. But I um, want to thank a few folks um, with the student rep process. I want to thank uh, Ms. Hafner. I sent her the application, and within like 20 minutes, she had emailed it to all the kids. Um, and then Ms. Earl today, allowing me to go into her classroom and sit and be on video today. I uh, appreciate her and then um, Shabri as well just for joining as, as she put it, as moral support. Um, <laughs> and that's it. And uh, well, I would also echo uh, Dr. Townsend. Everybody have a safe spring break. And um, that's it. All righty. Um, best of luck to our robotics team uh, heading off out of state um, I know you'll do well um, spring break is here enjoy yourselves please be safe uh, congrats to Robert um, bigger and better things await you I, um, let's see I think probably some of the best information was to hear that the OSBA is bringing in student reps how good would it be to have a direct line to the state house mm -hmm. if our kids and our surrounding districts had all of our reps in contact with the OSBA kids to get our thoughts of our kids in our district to the state house that quick. That would be a huge thing. So I hope all this works out in that direction and, and yep. we'll see where this goes. Mm -hmm. um, Janine, the uh, CF holiday uh, blurb you did on our, our uh, Facebook page has had 95 shares. It's gonna be a popular event. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of folks there so I hope uh, I hope they're ready for all of that, and I hope Mr. Glover's ready for the invasion, because that's going to be a lot of folks. I can see it happening. Um, Need yeah, for a lot of tour guides. A lot of tour guides, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, I am out of town that weekend, so I will not be around. Um, I know. Go ahead, Nate. Go ahead and say it. Stop. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> it is spring, and trout are running, so I will be out of town. Um, just another thing I saw last weekend in uh, the news is the Tennessee um, state government put into um, law that the school districts could do interns for teachers. And the way they're doing this is they're making it an accredited course as an intern, which takes almost a full year off of their four year um, education and licensing. And then the schools are sponsoring those interns, which in turn gives them connections to these folks wanting to learn to be teachers. So what they're doing is basically they're going in and job shadowing for the first couple of months and then they start taking over as like teaching aides. Um, I don't know if the state of Ohio is, is ready for something like that yet because it's a little bit of turmoil up in the state house, but it's, it's a direction that it's nice to see a state that's actually being proactive for our shortages of teachers and substitutes. Um, it would also give them a chance to get through their schooling a little bit quicker 
um, a little bit cheaper um, and give them some actual hands-on stuff so that these, uh, these teaching students can get a, a real handle on what they may want to teach uh, when they get out. So that's a, that's a great idea. Um, I'd love to see Ohio embrace that. I don't know that they will. Um, it's taken Tennessee, I think they said six years to get this through um, through their House and through their Senate, um, but they've made it an accredited courses it within the um, colleges, uh, the state colleges in Tennessee. That's kind of a big deal, you know, something to think about when you got interns, um, you know, talking about SEALs mm -hmm. and apprenticeships. I mean, that's that could be something that could be applicable to that and uh, they could run with. So that's all I've got tonight. I will entertain a motion and a second to conclude this. There will be no meetings afterwards. Um, and we can call it a night. Motion to second. So moved. Second. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Henry? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. Thank you all.